Good morning ladies and gentlemen and a very happy Easter to you. After my very relaxing holiday let's have a look at the price action which I followed from afar and uh, really quite liked. So what happened last week in the holiday shortened sessions? Well basically we just bounced along between the 200 day moving average on the dailies and the uh, red line which basically, oops, that's the wrong one, let's try again, which is a very important uh, moving average, which is the 10-day exponential. So we are trapped at the moment in this range between 25.90 and uh, 26.60. And really, uh, since the market is now bearish, looking for opportunities to squeeze up to these uh, higher moving averages and stop all the shorts out before we have the next move to the downside. So 27.25 would be uh, a very, very important level to the upside that uh, I certainly don't expect to be broken for quite some time. We will see later on that what the market has done, it's lost leadership. It's lost the Teslas, it's lost the Facebooks. Uh, not so much uh, a FANG story, but a story of uh, lack of leadership from any one sector, which we will see. And that, to me, would argue that the first few days of uh, next week, we should see uh, quite a bit of demand around the 2600 level. Uh, to squeeze up, uh, get everybody uh, nice and neutral or uh, even long again before we have another move that takes us into the uh, high to mid 2400s. That seems to be the story for the next several weeks and we will see what the evidence for that is. When looking for uh, confirmation. I always look at the uh, longer term uh, pictures, so something like a weekly or a uh, monthly. You can see that now the Bollinger Bands continue to constrict on a weekly chart. Uh, very good support down 2560, 2550 from the Bollinger Bands and the moving averages which would argue for two or three weeks of bouncing up towards uh, these higher moving averages, which they're all around 2700. Uh, that would be the, uh, the expectation before we try to bust down towards 2460, which is the level that I left you for uh, about 10 days ago. I think we will uh, definitely try to back and fill. This area is ideal. 2665 should trade again probably several times over the next couple of weeks and should be a good place to place initial shorts. Uh, hoping not to get squeezed too much above it. Uh, to me this picture is longer term bearish, shorter term bullish. Uh, I can't see the market just continuing lower uh, from this kind of a pattern. I think it's going to take uh, about three weeks of price action here to back and fill and enable a move lower at some stage. NQ, so the tech heavies, are giving us an even more interesting picture. It's basically confirming the view look at how low the uh, bollin uh, the sorry the um, stochastics are we are uh, in very deeply oversold territory we need a few days stroke weeks of backing and filling before turn that back up towards 50 and then it's ready to go down again if we uh, have a look at what this is saying to us, this is saying that there's a lot of support here between 6300 and 6400. 
uh, it's unlikely to be broken uh, in one go we need to go up and you can see how these longer term moving averages are now turning uh, would not be surprised at all to have a test of this kind of level uh, 6775 uh, wonderful place to buy some options for shorting it that would be my expectation several days of trading in here before rolling over so NQ confirms the view of a few days up uh, although one has to realize and we will see that in a moment that when you lose leadership it's never a, a clever idea to get too long these are all uh, trade longs so they need to be smaller in size than the positioning shorts that one wants to have up here so uh, let's now have a look at where the leadership is and what we can expect from the different sectors these are the queues which basically are trading in exactly the same pattern as xlk but it seems to be a little bit clearer here you can see how the moving averages here are turning for the first time since ooh, a long long time we have uh, around the 165 166 area is where they are all bunching up and you can see that that hasn't happened really since well the whole of 2017 throughout the whole of 2017 uh, this yellow moving average was pointing up and this is the first time it's actually turned lower therefore any rally up towards 165 165 50 is what we will be looking to short uh, it would be an absolutely wonderful thing if we could get up there and we have a uh, one wave a retracement and then the big wave that takes us down into the 147 area which is the 0.382 and also uh, where the gaps are would be a wonderful place to uh, uh, buy it back and get long for another move back up into the 160s so since this has been the sector which has been leading the market higher and it's now turning over there is a complete loss of leadership from XLK and the Qs therefore the upside is limited in ES certainly nothing above 2725 is likely to trade for a very very long time the other sector which produced leadership was XLF so the financials the financials are very nicely uh, contained by this 200 day moving average they are oversold uh, the 100 day moving average is still pointing upwards but the 50 day is turning over and we have a bunch of averages turning over around 2850 area to 2880 it would be wonderful if we could now play ping pong between the 100 day and the 200 day so anything up towards 28.25 so 2% higher before a nice move down into this area of 0.382 retracement around the 25.30 that would be ideal we don't have leadership here anymore it will take many many days of uh, bouncing around in this area uh, even if the market wants to go higher before we can uh, uh, do that therefore uh, confirms our view that really we want to set shorts in ES a couple of percentage higher uh, points higher than where we settled on Friday and this is XLY which provided fantastic leadership uh, throughout of uh, throughout 2017 and basically was responsible for the spike up in uh, uh, in the early part of this year where you can see how even that one has now gone back to uh, unchanged for the year it is turning the moving averages anything 
up to 103 and 3 quarters, 104 is going to be a wonderful sell for a move which certainly should come down to the 200 day moving average around 95. So that would be a 7 to 8 percent move lower after we have spent a week consolidating or several, well, several weeks consolidating at these levels. It is a picture basically which is confirmed by all the uh, large sectors of the uh, of the SPY. So we have XLY, we have XLK, uh, we have the financials. So just about 50% of the index with the same picture. A uh, couple of percentage points up and once we've uh, exhausted those, the uh, primary trend which at the moment seems to be down should reassert itself uh, for a uh, six seven eight percent move down in the index how does that compare to what we are seeing in the uh, fundamentals well it's the market stopped dead on the time 16 blue angel which is not unexpected it now can uh, trade between the 16 and 17 times Blue Angel and then come down to the 15 times Blue Angel, which has always been huge fundamental support. Uh, would love it to do that. That would be uh, the ideal place to buy it uh, somewhere in the mid 2400s by then. Uh, this is a picture which uh, certainly says ABC retracement, maybe a whole year of trading between the 17 and the 15 times Blue Angel before the market is ready to turn higher once more. But certainly, if I had to now shut my eyes and sell a straddle, I would sell the 2800, 2400 straddle for the rest of, uh, for the, rest of the year. Another market which is confirming the sideways price action for the next few days is EEM, so emerging markets. If we now have a look, we will see how the Bollinger Bands are constricting and they should give us a period of lower volatility, i.e. higher prices would not be surprised at all to see this gap attempt uh, early next week up towards the 49 area 49 should hold it and then we will be probably ready for another leg lower uh, identical picture it still says to me that emerging markets are a better buy than the US at the moment important to note that none of the spreads spread relationship between assets classes have really broken down if we look at SPY IEF so if we look at basically 10-year bonds against the stock market we see that all it's done is come back to the 200 day moving average it has turned the 50 but you would expect a period of consolidation between the 200 and the 50 exactly confirming what we've been saying a few days higher and a bit of sideways action probably two or three weeks before the next big move so that confirms this could be a spread which will be could become very important this year uh, this is the all all stocks against the SPY so everything against the states this is beginning to resemble an inverse head and shoulders Certainly this price action where US stocks have been trading much, much better than world stocks seems to be coming to an end. And we are now beginning to see very potent signs of world stocks probably outperforming US stocks. US stocks have lost the leadership. So anytime you want to be long, you want to be long of emerging markets and not of US stocks. 
this is now beginning to be a different story to the one from 2015, 16 and 17. And yet another very important chart. This is SPY over DBC commodities. It is definitely giving signs that it will break lower. Uh, it just could not break higher. It's now turning the 200 day moving average and this is exactly the picture you started seeing back in 2007 when stocks lost the leadership of the asset classes and it moved to commodities. This is a very interesting chart for the very long term. Don't expect very much to happen here in the next couple of weeks. Maybe go back up and test. But for the long term, it's saying commodities are going to be a more interesting asset class than uh, stocks. And therefore, any time it goes back up towards the 200-day moving average, which is only a couple of percent, you are looking to buy commodities and shorten your uh, your equity duration. That is actually uh, very bearish for equities in the very long term. But at the moment, it doesn't tell you very much. But what it does tell you is be concerned about equity positioning. When you're long, don't be too long. When you're long, be long of world commodities. Uh, not so much U.S. commodities, uh, sorry, U.S. equities. And this is the chart that tells us, yes, we still have some time before equities crap out. Equities over gold. Uh, made very, very good money two weeks ago by trading this. And all it's telling us is that we are still in a range we are beginning, just beginning, to turn the 200-day moving average. It's going to take time. The 50-day moving average has turned, but it would not surprise us at all to see many days or even weeks of sideways price action here before the breaks. So this is another chart which confirms our initial view that we are probably in for certainly a week but probably several weeks of trading between uh, 2590 and 2720 2725 with the shorts having to be set initially around the 2760 20 uh, sorry 2660 2680 area that will be where you want to start shorting and adding above it uh, can't see anything changing in this picture Gold is saying not yet. Commodities are saying it will come. Uh, bonds are saying nothing. And therefore, it's really a lack of leadership uh, from the states that's developing. And that argues for sideways. That argument of sideways is really reinforced and actually is being caused by the dollar. The dollar cannot get any weaker. This 61.8 support level that we banged on about, 88 something, has really held and held extremely well. The market just cannot penetrate it at the moment. Therefore, at some stage, it's going to go up. I mean, you just know that because people have very large uh, long euro positions. They're going to get stopped out. Uh, it might not last very long. It might only last to 91.60. It might go to 94.54. Regardless how far up it goes, you know because of the positioning, it actually is going to favor positions in world equities as opposed to U.S. equities. The dollar has now become a headwind to U.S. equities. Uh, this whole move uh, throughout last year where the dollar was actually pushing up U.S. equities is over for the foreseeable future. People are now getting out of those positions, so there will be selling pressure on U.S. equities, and the dollar is causing it. We then often look at individual stocks. This is Apple. 
uh, it just to me confirms I just wanted to show it to you uh, because it confirms the lack of leadership now so if Apple here is going to trade between the 200 and the 100 day moving average for a few weeks uh, between 170 or 171 and call it 163 that's not going to provide leadership right and if that doesn't provide leadership then what is well certainly it's not going to be a an amazing stock like Tesla uh, I think Tesla is probably leading the market I would say that we are uh, now somewhere here in the Tesla cycle so we've had the move down we had the move up we've had the retest and now we go sideways to up before the big down so Tesla to me is a leader of this market of certainly of the NQs or the Qs and it's showing us what is more likely than not to happen i.e. several weeks of sideways to up price action in ES before the move down if we have a look at Facebook we have much the same uh, picture so here we have it this is probably where we are now in the market so we had the move down we had move retest several days and weeks of sideways and then the absolute crap out so what is likely to happen to Facebook well it's more likely to actually fill uh, towards the 200 day moving average than not in my personal opinion so that will also be a source of support for the market but this has certainly lost leadership there is no way this is a V absolutely no way this will be a retest of the 200 day uh, moving average from below or even a retest of something like the 50 when it comes down so probably no higher than this kind of level 167 168 and then we can go down again so basically everything is pointing much the same uh, two or three weeks of sideways to up before the market is ready to make uh, another leg lower and in conclusion we have a look at the biases for next week the uh, US and the uh, Europeans are still very much in a uh, nothing burger mode uh, the bond markets are really there's very little long-term flow going into bonds uh, out of equities we would expect many 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 weeks of nothing uh, still the yield at minus 14 in the bobble is interesting we got to what minus 11 or something last week minus 14 is where we probably want to go uh, and buy some puts or put spreads now we showed you the commodity indices SPY DBC we think that's a very important long-term development uh, keep watching it uh, if you have uh, if you don't have any DBC in your portfolio certainly look for opportunities to add some uh, actually this is wrong this is 27.25 so weekly Bollinger's 25.50 is where they are now uh, this is going to be the uh, big area 26.75 to 27.25 losing 100 points here and we'll bet money that it does not close above 27.25 for a very long time uh, certainly uh, if you want to sell calls that's the safe strike to sell and you can sell a lot of them in my opinion uh, it's they might not yield you very much but I think they're very very safe and you want to be short of that level in a big way uh, NQ still not uh, change my mind that will be the big big level that you want to get long at uh, and I think we will get it uh, this now should change this should fall over the course of the next couple of weeks and it's going to be a wonderful time to buy uh, when we dip into the 16s and 17s in uh, in the VIX that will be the time to really buy it 
So first trade that will, I will do on Monday is actually sell volatility uh, and look to buy it around the 16 to 17 area. That will be my trade. Now, European equities, DAX held 11.7 to the tick. Wonderful. Uh, now it probably will just do very little. Uh, probably try to squeeze out all the shorts, and there are lots of shorts in uh, in DAX. So expect DAX to work better than S&Ps on the upside. Certainly would not be surprised to see 12,500 in a hurry in DAX with probably very little reaction from ES. We showed you how EM, EEM is trading much better. And we've showed you also that the dollar is the reason the dollar is now a headwind for US stocks. This has not changed from a very long-term perspective. These are the op opportunities to buy XLK when basically the queues come down to the 6,050 area in NQ and 147-ish in the QQQs. So those will be the big long-term opportunities. Have a very nice Easter. Thank you very much indeed and tweet you Monday.